Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I wanted to showcase what I believe to be the worst gun in Battlefield Hardline. The more I play this game, the more I realize that something needs to be done with the weapon balance. Every class has around two or three guns that are flat out amazing. They are a must pick, but then all of the others collect dust. And what I believe to be the worst weapon in this game has to go to the M45 submachine gun. And so really just to kind of jump into things, the main reason why I make this claim is a combination between its rounds per minute and its damage model. Up close, it actually does 34 damage per round. You might be thinking, wow, that, that's amazing. That's as much damage as the K-10 does in close encounter combat. And the K-10 submachine gun is arguably one of the most overpowered weapons in Battle of the Hardline. Why would the M45 be terrible? Why, like, why are you claiming that this is the worst weapon in the game? Well, I will give it that. That is one nice quality. But after eight meters, once your enemy is more than eight meters away, the damage drops off like a rock. Once your enemy is 20 meters and out, you will only be doing 12 damage per bullet. And so within eight meters, you kill your enemy within three bullets, but then as soon as you hit 20 meters away, which is really close if you're thinking about it, like you are always gonna be shooting at people that are 20 meters away. That is very standard in any first person shooter, and especially in Battle of the Hardline, that three bullets is gonna go all the way up until eight rounds. And to make matters even worse, the M45 only has a rounds per minute of 600. That is on the low end for basically every weapon in Battle of the Hardline. That is a very slow RPM, and usually a slow RPM is associated with a weapon that does very well at a distance, but because only 20 meters away. To give you an idea how far 20 meters is in Battle of the Hardline, that post or that flagpole is 20 meters out. That is ridiculously close. It is gonna require you to put eight bullets into your enemy at that distance at only 600 RPM. It is going to take you an eternity. You are going to get hit markers all day long. It is going to feel like it is going to take you forever to drop that enemy. And more often than not, even if you get the drop on that individual, they're gonna have plenty enough time to whip around with their M16A3 and blast your face full of virtual bullets and you're gonna be back at the spawn screen. It is a nightmare trying to be successful with the M45 simply because of this damage model and with that low RPM. Uh, one thing that I never thought I would need to consider though is that it is nearly impossible to identify how many bullets you need to put into an enemy to drop them from 100% to zero. If you have a target who is between that 8 to 20 meter zone, one meter, one meter difference closer or further away from you could mean the difference between requiring one or two extra bullets. Because that damage drops off just ridiculously quickly, 15 meters out may require five bullets, but 17 meters out may require six rounds. How in the world am I gonna be able to make that distinction on the battlefield in the thick of combat? There were numerous occasions, and I gotta say, it got old very quickly, where I would come across a few enemies out in the distance, they'd be in between that eight to 20, 20 meters zone. I would start the firefight on the first guy, I would feel like I put enough rounds into him in relation to how far away I was from him, switching over to the other because I knew I needed to switch quickly or I wasn't gonna come out of it alive, didn't compensate for the, for the first guy being just a little bit further than I initially thought he was. It required one extra round. He was left alive. He, of course, him and his buddy were able to gang up on me and I was down on the ground half a second later. You wouldn't really think that this would be all that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, but I'm sure you guys have noticed after using a weapon for an extended period of time that you more feel of when the enemy is gonna drop even before you see the kill notification pop up on your screen. You never get that confidence when you're using the M45 simply because it has that large variance. Uh, some of you might be thinking now, all right, there's gotta be some redeeming quality to the M45. That slow RPM must mean that it's laser beam-like accurate. It must have absolutely no recoil. And while it doesn't have a whole lot of vertical, it's horizontal puts a wrench into that entire theory. It's left kick comes in at 0.2, which is quite small, but it's right kick is a staggering 0.5. It's vertical is only 0.24, which like I said is quite small, but you're still having to deal with a weapon that's gonna kick a lot to the right. Like that is a significant amount of recoil. Really the only redeeming quality that I can think of is that it has a lot of rounds in its magazine. It has 37 rounds per mag, and so if you get into a situation where you come across 
four or five enemies that have their back to you and they're completely oblivious to, to your surroundings, you have the firepower and the damage in close encounter combat to technically take every single one of them out with ever having to reload. That is one redeeming quality of this gun. Even its reload time isn't something to write home about. Its short reload time is gonna take you 2.1 seconds, which is decent, it's all right, but its long reload time is gonna take you 2.86 seconds. And so other than the fact that it has a very nice magazine and high damage model in close encounter combat, I really think the only other great thing about this gun is that it looks awesome. This was a weapon that was created during the Vietnam War. This gun was used during the Vietnam War, and it has that very iconic, old, classic feel to it. That's probably my favorite part about this gun, is that it looks awesome. Like, it really does look iconic, but I don't know if this stylized look justifies using this thing on the battlefield and having to deal with all of the other nightmarish stats that are associated with it. And so overall, I cannot justify why anyone would want to use this submachine gun in Battlefield Hardline. There are far superior picks. The, the K-10, which I'm sure you guys are very accustomed with right now, uh, the MP5K, the, the P90, or the MPX are far superior picks. And it really begs the question, why did Visceral design this gun the way it is? Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you guys will let me know down below in the comments section what I'm missing and how to use this appropriately on the battlefield to make it a god gun. But just looking at its stats and associating them with all of the other weapons in the game, I can go on a limb and say this truly might be one of the worst, if not the worst, primary weapon in Battlefield Hardline. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is it for today's little review of the M45 submachine gun. I hope you enjoyed. I'm thinking about in the near future to just simply make a video dedicated to talk about weapon balance in the game because while some guns are amazing, like I mentioned, each class has a bunch of guns that are flat out phenomenal, all of the others that are in your arsenal pretty much suck. Like, you look at them stats-wise, you look at all of their statistics, and there's no reason to use stuff like the M45 over something like the K-10. And this is a widespread issue for all of the weapons in Hardline. And so hopefully Visceral realizes that this is an issue. Uh, like I said, I'll probably make a video about it in the near future, but it is a pretty big problem right now. Uh, but yep, until tomorrow, have a good one, and take it easy.